Hey everyone, so in that clip, that was actually me in the process of donating blood at my local blood bank. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about, you know, if you have the ability to donate blood, why well, you should. So, you know, right now in these crazy times with coronavirus, um, there is a need for blood. A lot of blood transfusions are needed. A lot more folks are ending up in the ICU. And I mean, the thing about it is it's not just the virus itself, but it's folks that have pre-existing conditions that, that end up being higher risk. So I know that personally, well, I know of it personally because I know of some folks that have diabetes and some heart problems. And when they get sick, they get sick, you know, really, really bad to the point where they may need hospitalization, loss of blood, um, you know, just, just things of that nature. So, you know, with me being on this fitness and health journey, there's no way I'm gonna take my health for granted. And which led me to say, you know what, I mean, why not donate blood? It was the first time I've ever done it. So I didn't know what the process was like. And I was nervous, I hate needles. I've never been to the doctors outside of a, a, a checkup, but I've never been admitted, but I've seen it firsthand. Folks who are admitted and folks who need blood. Which kind of pulls up the heartstrings a little bit for me. So the process was, um, you know, they 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 walked me into the room. So I made the appointment online. Um, I, I picked out my time frame and I did a whole blood donation. So that's, you know, we'll go into that a little bit later in the video. But a whole blood donation is, you know, they just take they take it from you. There's no special machine hooked up outside of the machine that pumps the blood out of you. So what happens is. You get in there, you fill out your demographics. That was my first time going into the blood bank. So I kind of filled out all my info, um, gave them my ID, gave them my medical history. So I did mention that I, you know, heart disease kind of runs in my family. So they pricked my finger first, um, took a little bit of blood sample. So they pricked it. They were like squeezing my finger till, till blood kept coming out. They filled this little pl plastic sort of machine thingy. And so they got it, they plugged it into the machine, they, they took my blood pressure, took my temperature, and you know, I was cleared to go to, to the next step. So I sat down and in that first clip, that was me actually sitting in that chair, they, they leaned it all the way back. Don't sleep, you're not allowed to sleep, I thought you could, because I was tired that, you know, that afternoon, but they're like, nope, in case you pass out, don't sleep. And you can't sleep anyways, because you were required to squeeze a stress ball every three to five seconds during that process. So the, the, the actual blood process, so you know, upon cleaning the site, finding the vein, sticking the needle in, keeping it in there, um, and starting the process, you're squeezing the whole time to prevent clotting from happening. And you're hooked up to, to the little machine on the side. Um, you have the, the nurse or the technician that's with you the entire time to kind of monitor you and make sure you're doing all right. And I, I had the needle, it was in me. It, it felt so surreal, but I was like, whatever. So. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, toughen it up. So I was squeezing the ball every three to five seconds, and I was thinking about it. The whole process in itself took, I think she said, six minutes and fifty seconds, so a little under seven minutes. And during that time, also they took vials. I think they took six vials of blood, um, kind of at my opening that I had. So taking blood, I'm steadily squeezing it. You know, the blood's coming out, and I didn't feel lightheaded at first. Right, so this is a big, big kind of disclosure is, you know, they make you or they suggest you sit down first for 10 to 15 minutes in their waiting room area before you, you get up and leave. So whether you drove there. So what I did was, I was with my wife and we drove there. She, she ran some errands because I, I was about 30 minutes altogether for that process. And, you know, she came back with the parking lot and was waiting. So, you know, right after I got up, I was like, oh, I feel fine. I'm like, I'm gonna head to the snack area because that's exactly what I did. I got some Gatorade, I got some water, I got some snacks and I sat down. Now, as soon as I sat down, I was tripping. I was just, I was having a hard time. I was kind of breathing in and out. Not a super hard time, but it was just an, a different experience. You know, my, my line of sight wasn't completely there and I could definitely feel a little bit weaker, at least kind of during that initial onset. And my eyes were kind of just, um, they couldn't see very clearly. So I, I took deep breaths in, deep breaths out. And it wasn't until about five minutes or so that, that I started feeling normal, um, that I could see clearly that, that I wasn't, you know, short of breath and I wasn't feeling kind of just, just loopy. Um, but other than that, I felt pretty normal. Um, when you do donate blood, you can't do any strenuous activity for 24 hours. 
um, after that time frame. So what I did was the way I timed it was I rest, I timed it with my rest day, which was Sunday. So I, I did it Saturday afternoon. I, I take a break anyways on Sunday, so I rested. So I had about 36 hours before I did any sort of physical activity, which, which worked out just fine. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, yeah, um, with whole blood donation, at least through our local you know, blood bank in Alaska, it's every 56 days and they take out 16 ounces, I believe, a pint, 16 ounces. So, you know, 16 ounce cup of coffee, that's how much blood they take out of you. I think it's, it's estimated to be about 10%, of course, depending on how much you weigh and how, how big you are, but yeah, I'm, I'm a shorter guy. I'm 5'7", 140 pounds, so they, they take a good amount of blood out, um, and I felt loopy afterwards. But I did the whole blood donation. Now, what's specific to, to COVID times is a lot of folks that have COVID, they, they want plasma and other aspects of your blood. I don't know the, the total mechanics of it, but you know, they're needing folks that have had the, that have had COVID, um, that have the antibodies in them to, to use them. Uh, but the other process of donating blood is through a freesian or a freezes. I hope I'm saying that right. But it's an, it's an automated type of machine to where you're plugged in, but it's not just seven minutes. It's, I think it's maybe an hour or two hours, but it's not as um, impactful because uh, you can donate, you know, a lot more frequently as opposed to the whole blood. So I can't do it for another two months. I can't do it. So I did it last week, November, you know, say early mid November, I can't do it again until January. Uh, but the Frisian, you know, depending on what type of donation you do, you can do it on a, on a more frequent basis. Um, I'm probably going to try that method later on. Um, probably do another whole blood just to kind of get my body used to it. Maybe it was just the first time that I did it that I kind of felt really lightheaded afterwards. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm not going to take advantage of my health. Um, if you donate b blood frequently, that's awesome. Um, if you don't, you should definitely consider it. Um, and it's cool at my local blood bank, they actually have a, uh, they have a wall with a gallon, they, they call it a gallon club. So I'm definitely gonna jump on that club and folks that have donated a gallon or more. And I, I've seen some, I saw some really impressive numbers for those folks must have been doing it for years. So yeah, I'm 28, my first time donating blood, definitely not my last time. Yeah, I'm not gonna take advantage of my health. I'm gonna help those that, that I think, you know, like, and it's potentially saving lives. So you know, how can you say no to that? And you get free snacks right after. I mean, it's kind of a, I'm a fat boy at heart, so it's kind of a win-win situation. But that's my little rant on donating blood, what my experience was, and uh, why you should too. So thanks for watching the video. And if you like it, uh, please give it a thumbs up, comment your experience if you've donated blood, or if you haven't donated blood, let me know if you have any other questions. I can maybe answer them in a little bit more in depth. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.